It's been over a year since I went to Japan for a research internship organized by the Amgen Foundation and posted this day in the life video. It didn't get many views, but I don't have many subscribers. And it did get a lot of comments, emails, and Instagram DMs. So I'd actually call that pretty successful. This video will tell you everything you need to know about the Amgen Scholars program, how to apply, and answer all the questions you sent me. I'll also share more about what I actually got up to in Japan if you're considering applying to the Kyoto or Tokyo programs, or if you're just interested in what I actually did in my spare time aside from all the research. As a hint, it involves a lot of hiking, lizards, and pancakes. So chapter one, what is the Amgen Scholars program? Amgen Scholars is a summer research program in biotechnology and medical research open to undergraduate university students. The basic premise is on your summer break, you'll travel to a host university and you'll spend two months in the lab doing real scientific research under the guidance of the specific lab leader that you applied to. When I participated, my flights and accommodation were paid for and we got a small stipend to cover things like food. During the program, you'll also get the chance to make new friends with other scholars from all around the world, which was really cool. And at the end of the program, you'll get the chance to attend their symposium where you'll present your research learn from all the other scholars and what they did over the two months. And you'll also hear from industry and biotechnology leaders, which I found pretty helpful and interesting. I also found this program to build my independence as we navigated public transport and day-to-day -day activities in a country with completely different culture and also a language that we didn't speak. Most of all, it also taught me how to make the most of every day as I was able to fit in plenty of travel and exploration in amongst the full-time research. Chapter two, application process. So you can find the application process on the website. They have quite a few host universities around the world, although it looks like they've changed it so that you can only apply to the program in your own region, but that's okay. To be eligible, you must have completed at least the first year of your bachelor's degree and not have graduated. You don't need any research experience or even a science major. You just need to be enthusiastic about science and really keen to work over your summer break. Once you've chosen a university, you'll need to select one of the laboratories to work with. You can read through all the options here and see which you find the most interesting. There's no preferencing and you can only apply for one lab, so choose carefully. When I applied, I had to send through my resume, current transcripts, letters of recommendation, and most importantly, a statement of purpose. This is pretty straightforward. It's just one page about why you chose your specific lab group and what you hope to learn. And then just a one page research proposal, including background and purpose, which methods or techniques you might use, and then what you expect the results to look like. What they're looking for on the first page is genuine interest in science and in the specific chosen lab group or topic. On the second page, they just wanna see that you know how to apply science to answer a problem. Remember, this is something you're meant to produce on your own without the help from other people at your university. Don't stress too much about the specific project. Your supervisor will probably give you a different one when you meet in person anyway. The program is quite competitive and because you only get the chance to apply for one lab group at a time, this means that some lab groups will be more competitive than others. You make of that what you will. Don't be discouraged if you aren't successful. You can always reapply next year if you apply early in your degree. And there are plenty of other options for gaining research experience. For example, my university lets you do a short research project um, with any of the professors for course credit, um, including over your summer break. Chapter three, your questions. By far the most common question I was asked was how do you write a research proposal on a topic that you are unfamiliar with? And just to reiterate, they know that you're not gonna be an expert, so don't worry too much about this. So you do need to try and be original here, um, and it is meant to be challenging. They just wanna pick out the students that are actually keen to learn a lot of new science and have the capacity to think somewhat independently. Spend some time researching um, your specific topic online and think about the things that you've learned so far at uni and how you might be able to incorporate that into your proposal. Here's how I structured mine. Um, so here's my main tip if you are still absolutely stuck and have no idea what to do. Search for the lab group that you want to join online. Most of them will have a, like a website or a LinkedIn or something and read through some of their recent publications. If you're applying for this program, you should find this somewhat interesting. At a minimum, just read the abstract on the conclusion. Try and see where the study left maybe a gap in knowledge or proposed a future direction. And then see if you can design a project that sort of fills this in. 
And just remember, one page isn't actually that much once you've covered like the background and the purpose of your study. So don't worry about this too much. So how do you prepare a resume? This is no different to a job application. There are a million templates and lines, so I'm not gonna go into this in any detail. Um, just make sure to include obviously your education and work history, but also any awards or achievements that you've acquired throughout your studies um, and any extracurricular activities that you do, because these are the things that are gonna make you stand out above others. What gave you a competitive edge? So I think I designed a project that fit well into the lab, but was still somewhat quite unique. I didn't even end up doing that project, but they're just looking for your ability to think scientifically. I think I wrote a pretty good page about why I wanted to work with that lab specifically. I obviously talked about my interest and a little bit of knowledge in the topic and my desire to further the research. But I was also really keen to learn from other lab members who were working on more adjacent projects to what I wanted to do. And I talked about why that was. I think overall, I just said I was really keen to learn um, what was on offer, but don't write about anything that's not actually true for you because people can usually tell if someone is being genuine or not. And I can also tell when this person wrote me a thank you email using chat GPT. So don't use that either. This person said that after watching my video, they were actually hesitant to apply because they thought I didn't have a good time. I and mean, that's not the case at all. Um, it was a really awesome experience and I'd encourage everyone to apply. The lab setup was quite different to what I was used to in Australia. My actual project involved characterizing different types of algae. The tasks were not mundane or like things that nobody else in the lab wanted to do. So everybody in the lab knows that you're just there to gain experience. It's not like you're getting paid for it or anything. So they'll assign you tasks that do actually further your research question. It's not like you only get assigned the boring tasks that nobody else in the lab wants to do. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't say that the tasks were mundane or anything. Um, I just did discover that I didn't want to study algae and that's also a very fine thing to learn. I still had a really good time and um, learned some valuable science and techniques. And actually at the symposium towards the end of the program, we had a few talks by some people involved in medicine. So obviously Amgen is a biotech and like medical pharmaceutical company. And some of these talks actually made me for the first time consider medicine as a career. And I've actually just made the decision to start medicine next year. So I think I have the program to thank somewhat for uh, helping me decide what I want to do after. Although I will say, I think it is important to set boundaries when you're actually there. Um, I think there was about 20 people in the cohort at Kyoto University when I was there. Um, and some of them would stay in the lab till like seven, eight o'clock at night and they'd just be working nonstop the whole time. Some of them enjoyed it and you know, good for them, but that was definitely not the lifestyle for me and I think my specific lab group was a little bit different as well in terms of their lab culture. Um, so I would leave every day, often around 3 or 4 p.m. because my experiment would be kind of finished. You have to let them incubate overnight or whatever. Um, so yeah, definitely set boundaries. If it gets to 5 p.m. and you want to clock off and actually have dinner, there is nothing keeping you there. There should be no expectation for you to stay later than you need to. Just don't be afraid to set yourself boundaries but make sure you're still getting everything done at the same time. Chapter four, my time in Japan outside of research. So a big part of the experience for me was the other opportunities I had outside of research. And I'm just gonna ramble for a bit here about what I got up to, cause I think it was actually kind of cool. So we were quite lucky to travel to Japan in the middle of 2022, which was sort of just at the tail end of COVID restrictions. And Japan wasn't actually open to tourists at the time, which meant that we, got the chance to be in Japan when there are no tourists. So this is the famous Arashiyama bamboo forest, which is normally swamped with people. But when we went there, it was completely empty. And yeah, so experiencing Japan like this was actually pretty special. For context about what I did with the rest of the time, I quite enjoy hiking and wildlife photography. And before I'd left, I'd actually messaged somebody online who was an ecology student at Kyoto University who spoke English, luckily. At the beginning of my project, I had to let my algae culture for five days and my supervisor let me take that time off. So I jumped on a plane and flew down to Okinawa um, and that friend that I had messaged online hooked me up with some of his other friends. And I was just traveling by myself, by the way, and I just met up with this random guy and we hopped in his car and. Um, went road cruising and we found some cool like frogs and lizards and stuff um, and then 
the next day I met up with this other guy who's doing his PhD on sea snakes and he took me scuba diving and that was really cool. So I decided to start running in the mornings when I was in Kyoto and this actually sort of kick-started my running bout that has lasted me more than a year until now and in that time I've um, got a coach and actually won a few races which is pretty cool. On one of my early morning runs I actually stumbled into this giant salamander at 6am and that was probably one of the coolest wildlife encounters I have ever had. Um, the video I made about it actually got like 7 million views on TikTok which I found pretty funny because I literally never used TikTok before. I also tried almost every souffle pancake in the country and let me tell you there's one that is absolutely better than all the others and that's from a place called Panel Cafe in Kyoto and I'm telling absolutely everybody who visits Kyoto they must visit this place it is so good. I follow them on Instagram now and I just get so jealous all the time. On the weekends I would catch a train or bus and go for a hike in the mountains just by myself. Um, I also visited Hiroshima and Miyajima which had these massive oysters. Elise and I also visited the Totori sand dunes. It looks like a desert, it's sick. I met up with the online friend that I made at Kyoto University a few times and he took me out herping. We did a little weekend trip around Okayama and found a ton of these cool keelbacks and some other nice snakes as well. Towards the end of the project I took the Shinkansen up to Tokyo and met up with somebody that I met on the program from um, the US and we hiked up Mount Fuji together. So we started hiking at 7pm and hiked all through the night. There are little stations along the way where you can buy snacks as well and take a little break to adjust to the altitude. It was really challenging but we eventually got to the top just in time for the sunrise and that was absolutely spectacular. We did a little walk around the uh, crater on the top. I think Ali and my friends um, posted a postcard, like there's a little post office right at the top and they'll put a stamp on it that says uh, this postcard was posted from the top of Mount Fuji which is pretty cool. There was tons of people up there but it really didn't feel crowded at all. I'd recommend packing some warmer clothes than I did for the top though because it gets really cold. And running back down was pretty fun. We got back to the bottom at like 8am I think. It was also the first real all-nighter that I ever had and I, I defined this as not sleeping until night time the next day. So you just skip night's sleep. I think all in all this just goes to show how much you can actually do in an afternoon or a weekend and it's something I really enjoy looking back on. And that's the end of the video. I hope I covered most things that people had questions about. If there's something I missed just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. But yeah, good luck in the application. Um, it's an absolutely awesome program and I know you're going to have a good time.